Well, got a lot of style. Demise for a day. That tie's got a touch of the Essendon about it too, Tim. <laughs> no, that don't be absurd. Really... I have absolutely no idea what colour Actually, Essendon you know, wears. You know what the colours are? They're North Sydney, which uh, David Hill's the president of. You're doing yes, a nice little bit of just quiet, television Tim. greasing up to the boss. I did not even know the names of the of the football teams that were in the grand final uh, at the weekend in Sydney because uh, it was only on the very day that it was to occur. It comes on the front pages of the newspapers where the proper news belongs. Well, actually, the Anti-Football League is not against the game as such. It's just against all the dreadful people that surround it. Are you calling us dreadful? Well, it Thanks goes on with it. Keith. The domination yes. of cultural life by the topic of football. People talk about football rather than the weather. Oh, I mean, it look gets, at you it two. You've the... come in here to talk about it. Well played. Another we, own goal. We were... <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's just forget about this personal invective. What about, let us discuss the character building aspects exactly. of the game. The fact that it takes people to the ultimate pinnacle, whatever that is. Well, it's not just in Melbourne too. See, now right throughout Victoria, southern New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania, you can go to country towns and you've got your football club, which is the unifi unifying, that's the word you're using, unifying force in the community. It's a place where you go to be character building, as you were saying yesterday, these are very good points. What's this about character building? You well, it's better than spraying know. graffiti in the trains. What, 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 what great people in this country have ever played football? Good you point, think Ian. I know, not one, <laughs> not one. I mean, you know, what about the injuries? Well, he I mean, played it, footy, it, didn't he? keeps the medical industry, you know, to... No, he was uh, a cricket. may as well stop people <laughs> driving on the roads. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it's an absolute passport for future injury in adult life. Either, And I believe, uh, I was giving Australian rules the credit for being less violent than uh, rugby, but I think uh, you, one of you guys was telling me in the, as, before we came on air that this was not so. It was equally as uh, the number of injuries was uh, as much, if not more so. Tim, are you going to give your medal back? Uh, your boss here, Keith, he's just said you're not opposed to footy at all, you just don't like the cultural stuff. Now you're getting stuck into it. Now are you in the club or not? <laughs> Well, I mean, Keith speaks for himself. I am violently, no matter, let me rephrase that, <laughs> passionately opposed to football. <laughs> because, uh, partly because of its, uh, on two grounds. First of all, the domination of conversation, which is worse in Victoria than it is in New South Wales. And secondly, the mindless violence and the example that it gives. I mean, if the Australian Broadcasting Tribunal were true to its charter, it would ban the viewing of football for children under 16. Well, I think one of the dreadful aspects of football is, insofar as Australian rules is concerned, is there's not enough violence in it anymore. Let's stop for a moment right. and experience a few highlights from this great game. I hope we get equal game, time. Whatever. <laughs> Race to a 48 point lead, but there was a more sinister subtext. Stephen Silvani apparently fell behind play, completely lost his cool. Gee whiz. And when his captain was clocked a beauty in the final term, Silvani ran the length of the ground to pursue his obsession, evening up. Well, what oh, do you think good of that? stuff. Can we have a look at that in a slow-mo? Looked like yeah. rugby to me. <laughs> These sort of things have been going on in the schoolyard for years and all. I mean, it's just a bit of... It's a game where physical contact is part of the action. I didn't see anything untoward in that. I quite enjoyed it, and I'd like to see a bit more of it. I was really confused about what Coda was watching there. What do you think? What would we do without it? What would you do without Thugby or Aussie Rules? Oh, well, I mean, uh, it, it, it's not part of my life anyway. My life exists without it. I've managed to banish all aspects of... I had one, well, then live quietly I had a in your life of and years leave us alone, Tim. Great, Just open those letters and get of, outraged on telly. I must tell you, a couple of years of great distress because my eldest son played rugby rugby league for a while and I used to have to stand on the sidelines being a proper daddy with these rugby hearties, these pot-bellied chain-smoking people urging their sons on to further well, physical don't, excesses. Don't play the man, Tim. It was play extremely a distressing sight and I was only pleased that he, that he actually got out of this without serious injury and uh, has since taken to playing cricket which is a... a well isn't it true that on the day that you got your, your award he was getting his nose straightened? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was probably as a result of something that happened to him on that uh, football field. Well speaking of cricket, England arrive in a couple of weeks. Keith, have you got an anti-cricket club as well? Certainly not. Well, Steady on. You like cricket? Oh yes, that's a Somebody once wrote to Backchat the and game. they said that the two quintessential properties of civilization were the English language and the cover drive. I think that's fair enough. I would go along with that. That's great. I think all if sports you're going to have great. an anti-footy club, I think you should have an anti-cricket club as well. No, I don't think cricket does the harm that football does. My main objection to football is it swamps everything. It, it stifles... Oh, un unlike the cricket get... during the summer, yeah, you've what really got to hunt the, through the, the paper to about page 8 to find anything to do, the do with the cricket. The very nearly ran a page this winter without a football story on the front page. The day after the Boxing Day test, there's no cricket in the no, sun. No, that, that, that was the day that Saddam Hussein 
walked into Kuwait. That was that's the only day they had a whole day when they had nothing football on the front page. It was all over the back and about fifteen pages from the back, but that was a clean day. Yeah, but see, people want good news in the paper. They're sick of that bad news, like Hussein. And it's good news if you hear that Gavin Brown has been cleared of hamstring trouble. But it destroys everything. Did you uh, know that we played a Davis Cup semi-final in, in Sydney this week? Very much so. Well, you could Clean sweep, 5-0. Why don't you have an anti-tennis anti club during the Australian Open? The papers are full of tennis during the Australian Open. It's terrible. That's it. That's I heard about the tennis <laughs> result actually when I was a listening to the broadcast, the, the footy broadcast. Which I was listening to while I was watching the game. I watched a grand final. You think final that's once. serious? <laughs> Do I? I watched a grand final once. I came over from Launceston in 1963 to observe the crowd as a sociological exercise. And there was a perfectly pleasant woman sitting beside me. And when the game started, she screamed and called for the broken bones and blood and turned into an absolute banshee. And when quarter time came, yeah, good I said stuff. to her, uh, Do you really w want them to, to break something? And she said, oh, not really, but I do like to see a bit of blood. And that, to me, <laughs> summarised... It probably gave her like, great relief. Roman Circus's attitude to football. It is just vile and unspeakable and should be condemned to the back pages of the newspaper where it belongs. Well, Manning so Clark, Professor fun. Manning Clark, eulogises the game as being artistry in motion, one of the most uh, superbly balletic sports ever invented. And you part of the Australian yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to come off my on. independent position here and make that what comment. What independent position? He's a perfectly civilised moderator. man until he comes to football. Obviously. I went to the footy one day with Yosti last year. Fortunately, Collingwood wasn't playing, so he wasn't sort of too sort of irrational. But as we were leaving, we, we trudged across the playing fields of Royal of Princes Park up there, up, up in Royal Parade, and we were sort of, it was raining and all, and Yosti turned to me as we got to the car and he said, gee, Melbourne would be a dull place without the football. I can hear the final siren right now. Keith Dunstan, thanks for joining us. Tim Bowden, yeah. Jeff Richardson, Ian Thank Cover. The singing member of the Could Have Been Champions is Greg Champion, and he's been so inspired by the game that he penned this song about one of the stars of tomorrow's preliminary final. Mr. Salmon. Kick us a goal We think you're special We think you got soul You are our hero When each match is over You're always palming to An Essendon rover Mr. Salmon They call you the fish There's just one thing Mr. Fish that we wish Go out today And kick a bag Mr. Salmon Win us a flag Mr. Salmon, so fast and so tall, runs well, kicks well, you've got it all. You are the one that we're always cheering. Your looks and manner are so endearing, Mr. Salmon. We're so impressed. You are our main man, our favorite, no less. Please turn on your magic, please. Yes, and please don't injure those knees. 